brands, the uh, personal brand, the Marillo Convert uh, is the automation software that we built. Uh, Sense Digital is my agency. I am a Adrius of Credentials agency partner with ManyChat. That's the chat bot that um, I believe it's over 400, it's powering over 400,000 business pages. And it's uh, the only partnering service with actual Facebook Messenger. So uh, we're going to go over that towards the end. I included a little bit of a technical setup just because it was requested last time. So I wanted to make sure I include that for you guys. And of course, uh, you know the HubSpot service. There you go. Um, okay, so went over this. Who I serve and local brands and businesses. I forgot about that. I do some uh, local brands as well as uh, coaches and influencers. Okay, so conversational marketing. Now, the point here is not to automate everything and space ourselves out from the customers, okay? The point is to automate the conversations that you don't want to have and do them instantly so that way you get top-notch customer service so that way you can have more of the conversations that you do want to have, which okay. we're talking sales. So uh, and this is the problem. It's a static web form, uh, just as we discussed. Uh, this is actually from my website, okay? So uh, <laughs> I practice what I preach, okay? Uh, I actually have both, and this is not on my home page. So um, I kind of keep it hidden and, and uh, have replaced the contact us tab with a sort of chat service. So, um, But this is typically what most people have on their website. And like I said, outside of a drip campaign automation um, or, or some type of immediate response, or uh, you know, in-person chat service, or whatever type of uh, customer service they have implemented, it's it's not very uh, reactive, you know. So it's not the best solution in this uh, instant gratification type of society that we live in. So um, now the argument against this, against losing or uh, using the automation, um, you know, we don't want to lose the personal touch. Like if we're going to answer everybody the same way and standardize and automate everything, we're going to lose that personal touch. And my uh, argument against that is you're going to lose that opportunity to even have that conversation because somebody else is going to be having that conversation with your potential prospect or customer because you were too slow and they already found their solution. So avoid that by using these type of tools in the first place. Um, so. The other one uh, is the consistency, okay? Like I said, you want some type of standardized way of handling your customers, okay? So basically, you want a consistent way to do that. And this is one of the best ways to do it because you're, you're speaking to them in the same type of way, using the same type of system, and you kind of uh, bypass that human error part of the, of the business, okay? Um, and you want to do this because now we can test what's working the best and what's not working, fix it, and then implement something that is going to work. Okay, that's why we want to do that. Okay, so the solution, of course, is David. No, it is conversational marketing. Okay, so right here we have Facebook Messenger is a big one right now. Uh, smart text automation, just some, some graphics up in the middle. Uh, web chat. And right here is a uh, embedded web chat uh, for mini chat. Okay, that actually, yeah. So that's my website. Um, and these are just a few of the examples of how you can start a conversation automatically with your new customers or potential prospects without having to lift a finger. And with uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> is that better? Okay. Um, and without having the potential to lose that customer, you know, if they pop in here at 9 p.m. and you're asleep, but your competition's not, and they connect with them first. Now you don't have to worry about that so much because you've got an automated chat messenger service handling it for you. Okay? Um, and these things, they're not free, but they're pretty darn close. Um, but they're the 24-7 uh, working employee that is, is never going to take a break. They're not going to you know, be late to work. They're not going to be stuck on the phone talking to their boyfriend. Uh, you know. And they're not going to ignore your calls. Like, it is just working 24-7 for you. So these things are great. OK. So first, uh, before I get into the technical walkthrough, let's go ahead and test it. So um, right now, I know everybody, like, 
presenters usually want you to put your phones off, but right now, if I could get everybody to turn your phones all the way up, the volume, okay? So go ahead and take out your phone and turn the volume all the way up, except you with my phone. <laughs> um, yeah, turn your volume all the way up, and then we're gonna do a little trick here and show y'all a real, real test, okay? Y'all can all try to break it and see, see what happens. Okay, so let me know when you've turned it off of silence. Uh, if you know how to work a QR code, go ahead. If you need to stand up and like come and scan it, I try to make it as big as possible. Um, I know some older Androids may have trouble with this. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. Can't service everybody. But <laughs> um, try to get the majority. Um, so I believe on an iPhone, or um, yeah, on an iPhone, you just hold it over, don't take the picture, hold it over there, and then on the camera app, and then the little thing pops up right in the middle. So you open your camera app, point it at the screen, and then this little thing slides up right above it. Are you having trouble? Or you got it? I got it. You got it? Okay, cool. Well, what's gonna happen next is um, it's gonna throw you to my chatbot messenger. You have to press get started, and then it starts you on a little flow. So um, it's gonna start chatting with you. Yeah, that stuff. It's probably making fun of me. But um, this is an example of what you could do. And go ahead and, and fill it out because there's a second step to it. Um, so we're, I'm showing you right now how you go from a web chat to Facebook Messenger. Because think, for example, this all starts on the corner of your website in a little Facebook Messenger chat window, OK? Then it takes you to Facebook Messenger. Okay, and then it starts this conversation there, and then it collects your information by asking you a few questions, take it to text message, okay, via software automation. So, get to that. Very clever how you're getting all these email addresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so another, another, well, another, for, another good example of this is this is a lead generation structure in real life. Um, but also, if you want a copy of the presentation, uh, that's how you get it. So that's you know, pretty much. Um, OK, so did everybody get at least fill out part of the way? Yeah? OK. You're not cool. getting my phone number. <laughs> Just say it. It's OK. It's that's OK. Where I stop. Yeah, yeah. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> All right. You, you got it? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Take, take a step. Trust me, I'm not a marketer that bugs the crap out of people, especially on text. Like, I'm respectful. <laughs> I think you have to back up. Yeah, you're real too close. <laughs> and, and actually, if you do want to test it, all you have to do is type in stop, and it completely stops. So, if you, if you did. <laughs> Uh, we, we actually use uh, Twilio for our text message automation, and it's, it's law that you have to include those type of things. And they don't even ask us, they just include it in the system. So, uh, Twilio, so our software integrates with Twilio. It's the cheapest, best pricing for text automation. Okay, and next step. Ready? Oh, that's, that's probably it. Yeah, there you go. It, it, it stops after a minute. <laughs> there it goes. OK, yeah. If you want to stop the, the automation thing, just type in stop. Uh, it'll still, in about an hour, it'll still ask you on Messenger, on Facebook Messenger, if you want to download the presentation. And then you just click. It's a Google Drive link right there. I'm not trying to take y'all's info, don't worry. Um, oh, okay, now the tech stuff. So installation walkthrough, just kind of a quick one. But uh, like I said, last time they were very, they had a chatbot guy come in and just talk about a bunch of crazy stuff, you know? Uh, and they said that the big thing that was missing was the actual walkthrough. So who knows how to install a WordPress plugin? Okay. Okay, awesome. Good, okay, y'all probably laugh at me. Y'all are way better than I am. Okay, so there. 
anyway, you're like, that's the old version, okay? So uh, basically, you just install the plugin, the header and footer, or whatever you're, you're using. I know there's a bunch out there, free and paid. Um, do this. Y'all can probably skip this, right? We can skip this part, the little installation. Okay, activate the plugin. Now, head to minichat.com, create account. If anybody has a laptop, you can actually do this right now, and it's, it's free. Um, so, oh wait, it's not free, I'm sorry, it's 10 bucks a month. So, okay, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, so what you do is you go in there, it's gonna ask you your Facebook uh, password, because it has to connect to your profile, and then it connects to that. Uh, then you claim whatever Facebook page you manage, probably your agency or whatever business uh, that you're running, maybe a client's, whatever. You claim that page. You have to click upgrade to the pro account uh, because this specific, this specific growth tool is what they're called, this specific uh, JavaScript snippet is part of their pay. It's 10 bucks a month, and it works harder than your best employee. So um, anyway. That's the growth tool, little selection in the menu. You hit that, you hit new growth tool, boom. It's got a nice little fancy customer chat option right there. It's super easy. Um, you could pay me to do it, but you can just do it yourself right here. So it's very easy to do. And they make it pretty simple, yeah. And then you just grab that little piece right there. I think y'all know what to do with it, right? Uh, and install it on the Oh, sorry, yeah, you gotta white, white label your, uh, your site right here. Take it over here, install it on the head tag of the website. Are these decent instructions right? Y'all seem a lot more tech savvy than the last group. <laughs> so, that's pretty much it. Save and update, of course, yeah. Don't forget to save. Test check, any questions, boom. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, really cool use case scenarios to bots and things that we do with them uh, generation area you're able to start these conversations and people like there's there's several things that can happen people feel so much more comfortable with personal information especially like financial information than a real person that they don't know it's so weird like through testing we found that people information so when you're talking about if you have any uh, loan officer clients, real estate clients, um, insurance, anything that involves their personal you know, information. Like I, I ran a, a case study, I was out in Georgia with a contractor doing some uh, video advertising shooting for them. And while I was out there, I'm like, you know what? Uh, it was post hurricane. So uh, there was a bunch of opportunity over there. They didn't want to do any lead generation, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put my own money into this, make it a case study. This will be cool. Uh, so we ran a campaign using these type of messenger bots, hooked it up to some Facebook ads, uh, and we had people going in there answering 15 to 20, pay, uh, 20 uh, question form surveys, giving up all kinds of uh, personal information, and we're talking about like, how much was your insurance check? Has your adjuster been out there? Are you approved? You know, is the job approved to get the insurance money and all that stuff? Um, do you have the check right now? Is it gonna be ready for me to get picked up? <laughs> I mean, just personal stuff that they would never tell a contractor. Just through Facebook? Or yeah, they, but it was linked. Were on Facebook answering a chat, or it, did you say you went back to the website and doing It was Facebook to the Messenger chat bot. So it's, to Facebook's Messenger chat bot? Yes. The me That's correct, correct. But it, I'm just trying to explain, like, the, uh, the power of these and why they're so effective, okay? So basically what we did is we were able to trick those people. It's not trick, but it's... It's not a trick. It's a ba bad word, bad word. So, life. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we were able to make those people feel comfortable. <laughs> we were able to make those people feel comfortable about giving up their information, okay? Uh, and in an industry where the jobs are anywhere from eight to like twenty thousand dollars, like just for that, you know, restoration, we were like ninety-two cents a lead. It was ridiculous, um, and they answered those because they felt comfortable, because they were time. But basically, what I said, that we tricked them. We made them fill out a long form that they would have never filled out on the internet, on some random website. But, but they did it because of stuff. And it's so effective. 
and I would suggest you use it because your competitors are going to start using it. More and more people are going to start using it. Um, right now, a lot of people still don't know what the heck it is. Um, and the, the biggest platform that these chatbots come off of, of course, is going to be Facebook and the other social media into websites with high traffic. Um, it's, people are not used to the transition yet. So I'll see across campaigns, like time and time again, people don't know what the heck is going on. And, and uh, you know, they'll be like, I don't know. I, I just clicked on something. Why are y'all messaging me? So there's still those people, you know, but that's like with any new technology, you're still going to have that little 1% that's like, that's like really uh, unaware of what's going on. Like asking a billboard, like, why are you, you know, targeting me? You're a billboard. Like, stop looking at me. What's up? Versus the websites, what engagement percentage or rate was, um, did you notice when it switched over to, like, text messaging? Because you have to kind of switch your engagement thought process probably from either on your mobile phone on the website or on a desktop, laptop on the website to another device or something. So yeah, yeah. So, so do you mean from the chat bot yeah. to a text like, message? You set up the demo for us and I got okay. a text message. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's point and then, then you convert to text message, right? Or are they... Yeah, so, okay. So in, in reality, uh, if, if we were to do that, here, let me just go back. If we were to do that, we would, we would just do it from uh, the... Uh, we would just do it from there, okay, and some of those steps, okay. but depending on where you're at and where they're coming from, uh, like the, the actual chat bot provides that that one-to-one -one, uh, communication. So that's why I did it for the demo, but like in, in real practice, if I was trying to do something that, com that switched over to text message, I would just go straight from this to the smart text automation, which is what that was. And basically, what, what that would mean, uh, you would phrase this in something where they're, pre, where they're pre framed for a yes or no question. Um, you know, it, it could be anything, it could even be a, a survey if you want to get into it. Uh, but basically, when they answer yes or no, then they opt in, okay, and into a new campaign. So you can make these drip sequences and, uh, you know, there, there's some artificial intelligence and natural language proce uh, processing uh, that can determine yes or no intent. So if the if the person texts, yeah, sure, thanks, no thanks, it'll it'll know what it's saying, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's it. That was a good question. Okay. Does anybody else have any good questions like that? No, it's just the. Just, I'm just thinking of, you know, from the customer perspective, you know, I mean, I'll give you an example. The last thing I want to do is engage with a chat box, enter my, any of my information. As soon as I do that, I'm bombarded with stuff I can't stop. Mm -hmm. And so there's a certain amount of trust that has to come with the love with the automation that you do. Mm -hmm. And if you abuse that trust, then you infuriate your customer and they go to your competition. So mm -hmm. where do you, you know, what are what are the good practice what are the good practices? Because I'll tell you, the moment you you know, I was for my email address in that in that sequence, mm -hmm. and then I was infuriated when I had to give you <laughs> my, my cell phone number. Yeah, I don't give yeah. that to anybody. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And there is a, and what I'm afraid of, everybody just goes, yeah, let's put all this stuff on, and then you drive your customers away because you you ask too many probing questions, and there's just a there, there's there's got to be a medium communicating with your customer and capturing their information, and making them feel like you've infringed on their privacy. Okay, okay, there's a points that I'd like to touch on there. So does anybody do any split testing on web forms at all? You do? Okay. Do you notice a difference when you add one more field? Like how much drop off is there? 
24, I mean, but that's a thing. Like split testing, just that is a thing. It's the same thing with this. There's Yeah, yeah. Exactly, and the, the word like that. There's, uh, so here's a pretty cool example. On the text uh, automation, different ways to do it, but on the text automation side, we have these things called trigger links, which I don't know if anybody uses Active Campaign or uh, email automation tools like that, but uh, when somebody clicks on one of these links within the text, okay, they are automatically playing a campaign that fires 20 minutes later, asking them why they didn't take the next action, or really asking them if there's anything we can do to help. We noticed that you didn't schedule. Uh, was there a problem, or was there maybe a time that, that wasn't available for you? We'd be happy to help. Or you can just type in right here the time that you'd like. So it, it's, it's crazy because it's a it's a level of almost like invasiveness, but also it's like a next level of customer service. And we're erring on that side, not going off and selling their information like car dealerships do, right. which is that that's the that's an extreme example, right. which I hate myself. Right. I know that. But the the other the other thing is uh, where does GPS come in? You okay? Uh, both in North America and okay. abroad, and yeah. we've got to be really careful. He just lost it. It's okay. Uh, well, uh, sure. But the, uh, you know, what are the the steps that you need to look? What are the things you need to look for to make sure you don't get in trouble in Europe? Uh, I mean, definitely, that is something that you know. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. Uh, wrong person to ask for that. Mm -hmm. But. Um, in this scenario, uh, I believe what it is is you have to have a checkbox uh, to make sure they understand they're opting in for marketing. I believe that's the GDRP. Anytime I come into a situation like there's, that, I have to review it. That plus there's, you have to give them the right to be forgotten. That if they tell you, erase me from everything you have, mm -hmm. you have to do it. And yeah. there has to be a way that they can verify that you did it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So let me yeah. The that's double option, yeah. But but like in this example of I'm going to send another follow-up to you in twenty minutes, if I haven't gotten that opt in and I've sent you another message. Yeah, if you're under G D P R you can't you can't do that. that. Right. Yeah. That, that's another good point too, and that kind of ties into that, is that in a lot, a lot of times you'll see people die right after that first message, kind of because of what I said earlier, how people don't know what the heck's going on and they'll just click on random crap on the internet, and they, and they get that first message, they're like, and they just back out and don't ever come back. Um, so that, that happens too, and I mean, it's a further way to disqualify people that aren't intended buyers. Mm -hmm. Who would you say would be right now the, uh, to just, institute a chat 
program like this and get rid of these forms and all that. Is there? I understand that we all, you know, at some point start getting more and more of us into this. But um, what industry? Is there a website traffic size? You know, how many? You know, if you've only getting fifty people to your website a yeah. day, mm -hmm. do you really want chat? You know, or yeah, a yeah. month, do you really want chat? You know, and what industries right now would you say you guys need to get that in our today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, of industry, uh, so I'm going to address that first. Any where you know that go to the next one, so anybody that would deserve a uh, immediate response, uh, any high ticket, anything that's worth instilling that, um, anybody that has already like a live chat service, like a human a manned live chat service or answering phone service. This is just another version of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, home services, big, um, and then the traffic. Yeah. So, chatbots solve a pro the problem. Usually, is traffic. Okay. So, if you don't have the traffic, there's no point in putting it on. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, that's why a lot of the times, as I mentioned, we'll pair it up to Facebook ads or Instagram ads. So. Um, of us have one of those marketing uh, use emails that you just send so you yeah. don't get the spam crap. Right. I mean, do, does anybody here have one of those? Mm -hmm. I know I do. I several. <laughs> several, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like one for each niche yeah. or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's all... There, and that was why I got bad was, was you captured my, my actual personal... Oh, because of... Okay, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so he, he, because uh, Facebook auto populates based on whatever you're, uh, is stored in your security settings. Mm -hmm. So that's it automatically. That's kind of why, like, I favored that one. There's other, uh, there's other chat, web chat forms uh, you can use. And some of them are actually a better option versus like mini chat or Facebook Messenger on your site because of the load speed uh, mainly. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to mess that up. So definitely look at based on all those choices because it's not the fastest one. I'll, I'll be honest with that. How do you want to manage a chat program? Manage? Yeah. So, you know, you, you've installed it. Now what? Okay. How, how, um, do, I, do I hire people? Do I have money? <laughs> do I have hours? You know, how does it, how does that manage? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, me, let me see. It's very similar to is managing like, like your community manager for like a Facebook page. It's very similar to that. Um, pretty much like almost the same thing, so. Um, but also, if you want to compare, if you want to start like doing uh, campaigns and engaging your audience that you're building on there, because this thing, uh, using certain ones like Mobile Monkey and MiniChat, you can actually build in there. Um, so the, uh, there's a guy that was doing it for uh, one of the big churches on Conroe or whatever, but they just amassed this huge list. And just like you said, children that I have, all these chat children that I have, and they're asking a bunch of questions and stuff. So yeah, it, there is some work involved. Point. You know, we've built uh, loyalty programs out of this, rewards programs, different things you can do because we think back to uh, the active campaign reference, you can tap and create uh, you know, within the entire program. Every time they click a button, it's trackable. You can retarget them within the messenger thing just for that. Um, and I do like that you asked those questions because uh, specifically the ones that are on the Facebook platform, 
Facebook is super strict about all this, and they don't want their plat they don't want people running away from the platform. So any little uh, chat bots or anything like that, like that are going outside the rules, can can and will get banned. And I think they even uh, are able to retroactively ban you for like stuff that you did, you know, before. So definitely like be careful, do your research, read the terms of service on any of these. Uh, if you're mixing any of these into social media, because, uh, you know, I, I, we, we'd be up here for days if we were talking about all that, you know, so. So, the, I keep coming back to is, and I'm just thinking through the, the company that I'm working with here. The UK, the UK one? Mm -hmm. The UK? No, I mean, like, okay, I'm, I sell, you know, or I'm one salesperson who has the entire world. Okay. And I now have no help. Yeah. So, okay, automation is great. I can, I can capture all these leads and then try to deal with them when I'm in the office and able to, to read them. Yeah. It's the, you know, there, people have certain products to answer with that great. It's the... How do I handle the questions that a bot can't answer? What, 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 yeah. How do you keep that person, you know, how do you keep that lead engaged? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, so uh, you can install a bunch of keywords into the platform on Minichat and Mobile Monkey. Uh, so you basically want to survey all the chats uh, or just catalog all the chats, keep track of them, see what the most frequently answered questions are, frequently asked questions are, um, and just keep updating those. And you can get real fancy with it and uh, use something called Dialogflow, which uses uh, natural language processing and uh, a little some artificial intelligence to randomize responses if you want to get super technical into that. Chatbots is the what works is you, it, and it's much like funnels or, or, or some websites. Uh, usually, what works and is effective is is the simplest thing, you know. So uh, it it tends to be true with these things as well, because when you overcomplicate it, you you lose traffic at every bump in the road, and then less people get to the end of the road, you know. So, um, but yeah, you you want to uh, have keywords, keep up. You have like a default response, which basically. If they ask something outside of the keywords, it once a day. It's it's you can limit it to only once a day, so it's not saying it on every response that they uh, message they send, mm -hmm. and uh, let them know that you know somebody will be right with them that can answer this question or something like that. You know, like and then even have a call button right there. And I'm you know, then then you can so. Yeah. But yeah, so it's not the uh, end all of everything, but it definitely does help in a lot of different situations. Um, as far as industries, uh, I focus primarily on local business. Uh, a lot, if you go on Facebook right now and search Sephora, if you search Louis Vuitton, if you search um, Domino's, I think Chili's, if you search any of those brands and go to their messenger, you're gonna be interacting with a chatbot. So like a lot of them, uh, Sephora, I think, was the first big one that really started doing it, and it's like a uh, kind of like a Snapchat makeup look kit, and it just paints your uh, face with makeup. So it's pretty cool. Um, I know some people that are doing it with like restaurants. You can go and like sample in augmented reality inside Messenger, and you know see how big your burger would look or whatever, how yummy it would look. So some cool stuff. Uh, any other any other questions? I appreciate all the good good questions. You're trying to stump me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so text, and then there's the chat bot. So with the smart text, it's just like uh, active campaign. Uh, 
a email or text message directly to the client or you know whoever's managing it, cell or email, okay, uh, or send it to a Slack channel. Whatever your format is, it's pretty customizable. Uh, as far as uh, like with mini chat, uh, so the chat bot that you can put on your website and via Facebook and everything like that, that is going to be uh, in the form of whoever the admins are on that. Uh, for one, they have to be an admin on the page to be an admin in the bot. Um, and uh, basically, it can email or send a message via Facebook Messenger. Uh, but also, you can have it trigger a Zapier, uh, a Zap or whatever, and have it do anything you want from that, you know, so. Are you familiar with Zapier? Uh, you are? <laughs> um, who's familiar with Zapier here? Okay, yeah, most, okay. Yeah, I don't know if I was speaking a, a different language, but. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? Any other non-Zapier questions? There's always some, you know, you don't think about. Um, so in the UK, and I had a, some campaigns in Africa, so over there, the chatbot stuff actually saved the day because there's nothing really built like this yet for WhatsApp. And across the rest of the world, I know we're here in the United States, but across the rest of the world, what? Oh, yeah. WhatsApp um, is everything. Yeah, every, I mean, that in Europe, uh, because of all the different countries together, in South America, uh, Mexico, a lot of places. And uh, so for our campaigns over there, uh, messenger marketing really saved the day because, like, there was no other option to um, run campaigns that were going to engage and start a conversation, like she was saying, with those customers immediately to get them comfortable and start a little environment with them. So. Um, so that was really cool. That's that's probably my, my biggest thing that I've learned with dealing with uh, overseas uh, campaigns, but very enjoyable. So, but people in other countries, just like in the U.S., still you're going to get a percentage of people that don't know what the heck it is, and they just click the button, random button on the internet. So, have fun. Uh, anything else? Oh, thank you. Um, usually what I do at this point is um, if there's anybody that's got a specific problem that they're having on WordPress right now, we're more than happy to crack it open and use the, the power of all of our brains together to see if we can help solve that problem. If there's like a weird question that you've got, we can maybe answer some of those questions about WordPress or a website you're working on. You're like, what? How do I do this? What? Um,
whatever women's business you're going on. I, I look at it, you know, straight to Facebook, that. Ads Manager, Women's Facebook Ads yeah. Manager. Because you try and get them all the numbers to match because they all have different algorithms. Yeah. They all have different so timelines. They all have different You will lose yeah. every bit of hair that you have. I totally yeah. understand that. It's a, this was just a timing thing because the website just went live. Yeah. And so we're looking, yeah, looking at it and it's very close. Like instantly. <laughs> Which plugin? Which plugin did you use? Uh, GTM. Thank you. 
of itself. So if you've got a successful campaign, let's say new website, you should give it new website as a campaign. And what happens is when you do all these things out, when you go into Google Analytics, you you have all of these different formats in Google Analytics. You've got the tool. So you can you can start now kind of filtering and viewing all of your analytics based on source, medium, the campaign term, the content in there. So it's a really, really great tool to see what where are people coming from to your website. So highly recommend this. It's, it's a bit of a manual kind of thing that you have to do. So when you're doing MailChimp and you're doing uh, a produced water campaign, let's say you've got a special month water campaign, uh, produced water campaign, and you're putting it on LinkedIn, you're going to have four or five different blog posts about it. One of them might be boosted, but you know, let's say you're going to do a little ad on this. You might have a campaign link to LinkedIn. You have a medium, could be um, messenger, right? So you're going to do the messenger stuff all in there, so maybe a chat bot in there. You could do um, the campaign name, it might be new uh, uh, water, uh, produced water, new produced water, so you know at least a month. And then uh, a campaign term and content. Again, if you hate keywords, we're going to give you specific key phrases in there. So um, improving improving industrial water could be the phrase or something. And then the content. So you can differentiate. You could have, I mean, it can get super complicated. And that's why I'm saying have some kind of spreadsheet where you're consistent in doing some of these terms. Um, and then when you're done,